of the Tape, brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. All right, take a look at this. You know, it, 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 the first thing that's going to jump off the page is just simply the record. Somebody's O, as they love to say, Sean, and I'm no different, somebody's O has got to go. Did you just do that yourself? You just I cannot make that up. I cannot moment. take credit for that. Our night begins with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome as tonight Miller Live presents Bellator MMA. For those joining us around the world live on the Bellator MMA Global app, we welcome you to Wingstar World Casino and Resort as we kick off the action now with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner first. At six foot weighing in 169.7 pounds. His professional record early on stands undefeated at 1 0. He fights out of Wichita, Kansas, presenting Tyler Ingram. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot 11 weighing in 170.7 pounds. His professional record early on undefeated as well. He brings three wins, no defeats. Originally from Mexico, he fights out of San Jose, California. Introducing Fernando Rosales. In charge of the action, your referee, Jaron Vallel. On my cue, gentlemen. Fighter, fighter, fight! What the hell is that? Link, back in the vehicle! The fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste in only 96 calories. Now, Fernando Gonzalez in the red gloves out of AKA. One of the things these two have are very different, the pedigree. All three fight for Fernando Gonzalez under the Bellator umbrella. Again, AKA has produced some big time fighters in the sport. His reputation precedes itself and that's, you know, you talk about being an underdog and Tyler Ingram knows he is one going into this fight very early in his career. Yeah, you know, I was in the workout room last night catching uh, my own exercises, and Tyler was working out. He was doing some kickboxing stuff, and I even had to sit and ask his coach, hey, what are you doing there? They showed me. He looked great was my point. And then they informed me, yeah, he's not even a, a, a kickboxer as much as he is a wrestler. But right now I'm seeing uh, he's not quite finding that wrestling range. Gonzalez is starting this with some pretty good combinations. When you see fighters for the first time, the first minute you see them, what's the first thing you're looking for? I'm looking for their ability to control range. Can they step into distance? I, I see so many fighters come out, and their movement's good, and their positions look good, and you can tell they put plenty of time like, on the heavy bags and with the mitt with the coaches. But to really be able to judge their experience, Sean, to judge how they sparred, to judge how they've competed in the past, it comes down to range. Can you step in and do that geometry on the fly of where is this moving target? Particularly against the southpaw, which Gonzalez is. That right jab has found a home here in the first 90 seconds. I like how Gonzalez is moving. And if he throws one punch, he throws two. There's no reason if one lands to not throw something behind it. And he's doing that real well. You see the damage he has already done. I mean, they go hard everywhere, but the stories that come oh. out of AKA, and there's a good shot from England. Let's talk about his kickboxing. Good jab, too. Yeah. We'll keep him honest at least. That's twice. You can see that's done some damage here on that front leg. Yeah, no, In Ingham is really tough. That was a great one-two combo by Ingram. Gonzalez fires back. That's three. Kicks that have done damage again. Remember, when you have reverse stances, it works with the kicks, too. That time, Ingram threw it with a lead leg and generated some power. No, he did it. He switched his stance here. I see what he did. He did. OK. I wonder if Gonzalez is going to have to think about that after taking that shot on that lead leg. Well, being as he, he confused you and I, at least for a millisecond, I, I would certainly think that to be across from a guy that's changing from orthodox to southpaw, that is a, that is a different look. All right, Ingram pushing in the fence here. Again, I, I got to tell you, they told me last night he prefers to wrestle than strike. So he's got his hands on him now. Let's see what he's going to do. Ingram using a good underhook, looking to reach around the back and trap that arm. What is going through your mind when you get a great takedown? On the fence, see if he has room to work. 
in the half guard. What, the first time you take a good shot, a good leg kick, and your leg isn't what you want it to be, what's, what is going through your mind? Yeah, so uh, it's not wonderful. So, I mean, look, it can slow you down. You can feel a numbness. A, a lot of our viewers will be able to relate to it, particularly if you grew up with siblings in the house, because you'll remember the old Charlie horse, right? Oh, yeah. I know that sounds silly, but, Sean, that's what it's like. You're, we call it a dead leg sometimes. It can, your leg can go a little bit numb. You can lose control over the course of a fight, multiple shots, particularly uh, with the shin bone and these power leg kicks. Good stand up there by Gonzalez. We got a good fight on our hands. What, what the this heck's is going on here? Gonzalez forcing his way up. You can see a lot of damage done in the first three minutes by both fighters. They stayed in the pocket. Ingrid takes us back. Here we go. Great suplex. I love that, Sean, because it's gravity. Once you uh, uh, lock your hands and pop your hips, gravity is going to bring your opponent down to the mat. Gonzalez trying to recover guard here. He's got half guard. He's got an underhook. You got to treasure that opportunity does not present itself a lot inside the cage. You got to treasure that moment. Ingram is annoying him constantly. He is not giving him anywhere to rest. He's taking little pot shots. He's grabbing the kicks, the punches on the feet. Even on the ground here, half guard. He's looking to strike. It just doesn't give uh, Gonzalez an opportunity in this position to get his own offense mounted. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's really been an impressive start for Tyler Ringham, especially after the first 30 seconds. Not quite big enough. Heavy hits, Ty, heavy hits. Wants to get the side control, thought he had it for a second. Looks like there's an opportunity there to pass. My suspicion with, uh, in Gonzalez's mind right now is he knows we're inside the last 30 seconds and he's prepared to just ride this one out. I don't think he's looking for those underhooks, which is the first sign and first step to standing up and getting back to his feet. He's going to try to pick forward, but it's tough out of half guard. But nonetheless, a very impressive opening round. That last three, three and a half minutes controlled by the underdog, Tyler Ingram. I think the, the game plan here for Gonzalez will be to keep it here. Keep it on the feet. He was having some good opportunities. He's got a good jab. Keep your eyes out for damage on that right leg of Gonzalez. His, his hands are already not as high here to start round two as they were to start round one. Four, Sean. I'm keeping track with you. Ingram landed another big leg kick. Damage that comes from leg kicks. The best example, if you're a Bellator fan over the last couple of years, when Douglas Lima beat Andre Korshkov to regain the welterweight title. Andre Korshkov was dominant again in the first round, but Douglas Lima, as he is wont to do, kept laying in those leg kicks after leg kick. And Korshkov, at the end, you know, he didn't have anything left, and he got careless because he knew he wasn't going to make the five rounds on those legs, taking those kicks. Sure. He got knocked out. Sure, Lima, e even in defeat, even in the night he lost his championship, Roy McDonald, he took that whole leg away. It's really in the setup. A lot of people can turn and uh, throw a leg kick, but they get blocked. He's, oh, boy. Another one. Boy, that's five. That's gonna, that, this is the beginning of the end of that leg. Poor Gonzalez, he's throwing hard still. There's another one slips in. You're three fights into your career, you've had very high-level training, but very little can prepare you for this when all of a sudden you don't have a right leg. I'm impressed with Gonzalez. I think he's behind on the judges' cards right now, but I am impressed with his skills. I think just further it would tell you how good Ingram is looking tonight. That overhand left had nothing on it, and you could see that leg was about to go. Tyler Ingram just chopping Fernando Gonzalez down. Coaches will tell you, Muay Thai and kickboxing coaches will tell you that that shin bone, the part of your shin bone that you're driving into your opponent's upper thigh is like swinging a baseball bat and that some fighters can go as fast as 80 miles per hour. Just to put in perspective for our, our, our viewer at home as to why Gonzalez, a trained cage fighter, fell. He fell down, though, that leg got taken away. And a great step over into full mount. Can he hold it? Fellas, it's time to take care of down there. I guess I have let my bottom half go. Use Manscapes. Elbows here, big elbows. Now you're starting to see the inexperience of Tyler Ingram. He's in a dominant position. Slicing elbow does huge damage from Ingram. 
Oh, Gonzalez in a world of trouble right now. Well, these two are putting some pressure on the boys in the back because this is an absolute display of mixed martial arts here. We're seeing everything. Punches, kicks, offense, defense, heart, grit, and right in this case, groundwork with no lulls in action. This is the first fight of the night. Room again, trying to step through, does. Beautiful again, in a full mount, wow. Brings his knee right across the belly, right where it should be. Starting to see why his coach made a point to tell me he's a grappler first. I'm seeing it on the ground here. Pulls his opponent back, creates some space, brings his knee inside, wow. This is outstanding technique. Joe, can you see almost a little impatience here with Tyler Ingram in each of these positions? Or, or a gaining of confidence, but yes, I do see where he, he has an urgency out there. And Gonzalez has seemed uh, to have left just a little bit in terms of the urgency. He started out really well in the very first round, but he does seem to be frustrated here on the ground. Seems to be in protective mode, defense mode. Minute 12 is an awful long time when you're down where Fernando Gonzalez is. Defense is great when you're trying to uh, teach uh, young people martial arts. These are rough elbows, slicing elbow shots getting through from Ingram. We may be near the finish line here. Gonzalez has to get out of there. Defense is not great when you're trying Exposes to Exposes the neck and we're done. A mixed martial arts fight and there it is. That was an exceptional early career performance from Tyler Ingram. That's how you make an impact. Let's check out the replay presented by Blackheart Premium Spice Rum, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Fernando Gonzalez was just out of options here. We had everything thrown at him but the kitchen sink. I mean, look at these elbows are just crashing down. He's also got to deal with the fact that he's in half guard. He wants to get back to, to full if he can or work his way to his feet. I mean, there was just nowhere to, uh, to breathe. There was no breathing room. Tyler Ringerman waited and waited and waited, looking for that one opening. Yeah, that choke is yep. not in, by the way. That choke's not in. But look, Gonzalez had enough. And when you've had enough, that is the correct signal. You simply tap out. Really impressive. Gonzalez went as far as he did, as banged up as he was. I agree. I agree. I got no problem with either one of these guys. That was a great contest. All right, Michael C. Williams makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage while working the rear naked choke, the tap does come officially. Four minutes, 13 seconds into round number two. The winner and still undefeated Tyler Ingram. Tail of the tape brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports.